data reduction. We have several modes by which we take a body of data and reduce it. One is the perfect recovery mode. We call it compression. We compress the data, but we don't lose anything. We can at any point decompress the data and uh, neutralize any effect of the reduction. The other mode is effective recovery, in which mode we lose some data, but uh, there is not much damage that's being done. That is what we see in uh, popular uh, uh, video and audio file. The Fraunhofer Institute in Germany managed to uh, come up with an algorithm that will take the original files and uh, uh, eliminate some so-called fat from those files so that when we view the video or when we listen to the audio, uh, we don't notice that there is less data that brings us the experience. Fewer bits deliver the same experience as the full body of, uh, of bits. And for most of us, uh, there is no difference. Some very sensitive people, there may be, but not for the most of us. That's the effective recovery. The third mode is no recovery. When what we lose is such that the result doesn't look at all like the original and there is no way to undo the uh, loss of data. Uh, by the way, uh, the familiar analog to digital, when we take uh, a music or we take anything that is analog and we digitize it, there is always a loss of data, but uh, we are trying to make it effective recovery so that we can reconstitute the uh, smooth curve uh, from the digital expression. In cryptography, the uh, interesting mode is the no recovery mode, in which case we take uh, a string of bits and reduce it to a smaller string of bits. Now, why would we want to do that? Here's why. Lossy data reduction. We take a string of bits, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, we call it the long, and what we try to do is reduce it to a short string, short, S. This bit, this string has L bits, and this one has small s bits. How can we do it? Very easy. You just randomly eliminate L minus s bits from this string and you get a short string. Achieve what you want. Does it do any good? Not much. However, if we will do it in a different way, we will be able to uh, get some utility out of this process of replacing a long list with a short list. Let's take an extreme example that the short list is one bit long. So we reduce this uh, long list into one bit, which may be zero or one. We don't know. How do we do it? Suppose we simply add the values of all the bits in the long string. Add them up. And if the result is an even number, we will 
write zero here in the short string. If the result is an odd number, we will write one. What is it good for? Well, suppose we take the string and communicate it to someone. And we also communicate this one bit, this short string. And suppose that along the way, for some reason, one of those bits flipped from 0 to 1 or from 1 to 0. Now, the recipients that will receive this uh, string and receive this short string will be able also to add all the numbers here. And if the recipient adds the number and he gets an odd, and here it's an odd, he assumes that no bit has flipped. If he adds and it gets an even, and here it's a zero, he assumes the same. But if there is an inconsistency, if the recipient adds all the numbers and gets an odd, and the short string shows a zero, then the suspicion is that one of those bits flipped. Of course, if two bits flips, flip, uh, this will not catch it. But if one bit in the string flips, the, uh, this concept of adding a short string, we call it a hash also, to the long string will give us some insurance against uh, errors that occur along the way, or for any reason. Now, it's obvious that if we take this long string and cut it by uh, to uh, section, and let's say we have here k section, k section, one, two, three, four, five, k. Now, we can count the bits in each section separately. And if it's even, we represent it by zero, if it's odd, by one. So what happens here? We have the short string that will be k bits long. And this short string, because it's not one, but k, will give us more refined uh, information as to whether anything happened to this string. And of course, in the uh, extreme way, the short equals the long, s equals l, then any flip, if it didn't occur simultaneously in the other one, uh, will show up. So, what do we learn from here? We can hash, reduce a long string to a short string that will alert us for errors. That's the history of hashing. But when cybersecurity became a problem, the idea sprang out. What we do against errors, we can do against malice. So we can prevent a hacker from changing something here by adding a short string, a hash. But it's one thing to protect against random errors. It's something else to protect against a malicious, smart, knowledgeable hacker. So to use this technique of providing an add-on, a hash, a small string, to a big string, to a large string, in order to ensure that nobody messed up 
with this long string requires some conditions. The conditions have to be such that we will have an algorithm like the algorithm that I described for the error correction code that will take all the bits here into account massage them somehow and come out with a short string. Now it is clear because this is long and this is short, it's clear that there are two to the power of L possible strings of the long uh, size and two to the power of S string strings for the short size and since L is, is bigger or even much bigger than S, uh, 2 to the power of L is much bigger than 2 to the power of S. What does it mean? It means that uh, on average 2 to the power of L minus S, which may be a large number, dep depends on the values of L and S, this is the number of strings that will all uh, be represented represented by a hash that looks the same. So in, in other words, one hash will on average uh, be associated with 2 to the power of L minus S strings of the long kind. That means that if somebody will be able, looking at at the uh, uh, hash and be able to replace the original L string with, a, with another string L such that the two strings will share the same hash, then we will believe that L prime is the L because it will pass the hash test. So we need to select an algorithm such that given the hash it will be difficult to find a long list that will hash into it. That's the fundamental requirement. It can be iterated in some refined way, uh, resistance to collision, but in a, in a big picture, you are using hash in order to ensure that a piece of data was not corrupted, was not changed, was not replaced. And to do that, we need an algorithm that will replace the long one in a, with a sh the long string with a short string in such a way that the hacker will not be able to find another string, not the one that was sent, that will share the same hash. Now, because there are so many strings that share the same hash, it's quite a steep charge. Next time, we will see how we meet the challenge. Here, we just focus on understanding what the challenge is. Thank you.